Hi, I'm Sean Wood from Tom Woods Custom Drive Shafts. Today I'm going to explain drive shaft angles, um, how they work, what the proper geometry is, how it changes when you lift the vehicle, and, and also some terminology as well because there's a lot of confusing terms here. One of the first things we're going to talk about is terminology and, and what all the different names mean. So a lot of times you'll hear the word double cardigan. A lot of times people call it a double cardigan. It's not a double cardigan. Cardigan's a sweater. In this case, we're talking a cardin, and so I'm going to just draw it here, or write it out. So it's, it's cardin, C-A-R-D-A-N, and you can think of it as two words, car, and guy's name, Dan. So cardan, so what a double cardin is. Um, double cardin is really just short for W joint. So this is what you'd call a cardin joint. More commonly, it's called a universal joint. What I'm talking about is one end of the drive shaft specifically. So this has two universal joints. So we'd call it a double cardin. A lot of times we'll call this a CV as well. Around the shop, we, we say CV more than we say double cardin because it's just easier to say. What CV stands for is constant velocity. And while this is pretty close to a, a, a constant velocity joint, it's not a true CV. A CV is what you see here. So this is like a, a drive shaft out of a JK. A lot of Jeeps run these nowadays, a lot of other vehicles. But this is a CV joint. So this is a constant velocity joint. Uh, the distinction here is we would call this a Rosepa CV. So a lot of people wonder, why do you need a double cardin? Common misconception is people think that this, because there's two joints, it's gonna flex twice as far as, let's say, this end. You think if this end flexes to 20 degrees, then this, because there's two of them, it's gonna flex to 40 degrees. That's not the case. Normally, this joint, even though there's two of them, it's gonna flex only about as far as this joint before it binds up, before it stops. What this does is it transmits power more smoothly through steeper angles, which we'll get into uh, a lot more in depth here in a minute. All right, so a universal joint, because it only pivots in two directions, like this, it's a lot like a, a universal joint on a ratchet driver. So if you've ever used one of these, which I think most of us have, it runs real, real smooth if it's running straight, but if you're really trying to go around a tight corner, it's gonna wanna speed up and slow down, it runs real rough. So same thing with the drive shaft. If it's running straight, it runs real smooth. But if you have a lot of angle on there, it's going to run real rough. Here we have a drive shaft that you'd find in a lot of stock vehicles. Um, this particular length, it might be in a Jeep CJ, um, has a single U-joint at each end. And this works in stock vehicles because it's real flat. For this type of shaft to work well, you need to have two things happen. One is that these two U-joints are running parallel to one another, which in, in this demonstration, this transfer case tips down slightly, the pinion slips, tips up slightly, so they're parallel to one another. But the big one, and this is the one that you can't achieve on lifted vehicles, is that the joint angle here is less than about 10 degrees. So the joint angle is not the angle of the drive shaft. A lot of people just put angle finder on the drive shaft. They say, that's 20 degrees. They have a 20 degree drive shaft angle. What's really important is, is what is the relationship between this and this. So in this case, this is actually 10 degrees. This is about three, this is about three. So the operating angle of this joint is 3 minus 10, 7. Down here, same thing, 7 degree joint angle. So two joints running at less than 10 degrees each. They're parallel. Um, that oscillation that you get out of this U-joint gets canceled out by this U-joint, and so it runs smoothly up to a point. Once you exceed about 10 degrees, 10's not a, a, a hard line, but about 10 degrees, certainly up into 15 degrees, these joints are just oscillating too much, and they're fighting each other, and they're not going to cancel each other out. So that's where we come to the double cardin. Now to show what happens when you lift a vehicle to, to simulate that, um, what we have here is this pinion is just setting on some eight inch sections of tube. We're gonna take these out, put it on some five inch sections of tube. So that's going to, in effect, simulate what happens when you install a three inch lift. Okay, so now that we've lowered this pinion three inches, in effect, uh, installing a three inch lift on this vehicle, I've measured this again. Now this angle, the angle of the drive shaft, the slope of the drive shaft, it's about 20 degrees. Uh, before it was 10, so the relationship between the drive shaft and the transit case or the pinion was about seven. Now it's about 17 at each end. So if you remember, 10 is kind of the limit. Um, we're at 17, that's well beyond the limit. So this is gonna run rough. These U joints are just running at too much. They're oscillating too much. They're fighting against each other and they're not gonna be able to smooth each other out. One thing that a lot of people misunderstand is they think the only thing that matters is, is this parallel and this parallel and they'll just measure that and say my pinion's parallel to the trans case, therefore this is the type of shaft I need. 
And that's a little bit backwards. The way you really de uh, determine what type of shaft you need is you measure the angle of the transfer case, which you can do you just measure off the yoke if the, if the drive shaft's removed. We have a video showing how to measure angles and all that. We have some info on our website. But you measure the angle, angle of the transfer case, measure the angle of the drive shaft, and if the difference between those two numbers is greater than 10 degrees, especially by a, a lot, this isn't gonna work. It doesn't matter if these are parallel or not. Now, you do the double carden and the pinion adjustment, the rules change. Before, these needed to be parallel, but now you need to rotate the pinion to match the drive shaft. One thing to point out too is, in this case, this would be for a rear drive shaft. The transfer case points down toward the, the drive shaft, and so that decreases the angle. If it was on the other side of the transfer case, so a front drive shaft, that transfer case is gonna point up away from the drive shaft. So that's going to compound that angle. And on most vehicles, the front drive shaft, the geometry is just wrong. It always was. If it doesn't have a double carden, it should. A lot of part-time four-wheel drive vehicles, they'll put this type of shaft in the front because it's utilitarian, it's cheap, it's easy. It turns the wheels when you need to. You unlock the hubs. Who cares if it runs smooth? The rear shaft is where we really want to focus our efforts on getting things smooth because if you're in two-wheel drive, you're going down the highway, the shaft is spinning. This is the one that's that's getting you from, from home to work, and this is the one that you really want to run smoothly. If your front shaft is running all the time, um, you probably need to look at that too. The pinion angle adjustment rules change. You don't really want to adjust that. Uh, on the front, you can't really get the angles perfect um, because they're steering caster, but you can still get it uh, the least bad option. So a lot of times that will still be the double carton. All right, so now we have the double carton style drive shaft installed. And, and up here, where before we had a single U-joint running at 17 degrees, we really now have one, two U-joints running at um, eight and a half degrees each. Down here, though, this one is still running at 17 degrees. These two, you could kind of think of it as the drive shaft we had before of two U-joints running at equal angles, less than 10 degrees. So, you know, one, two, less than seven, uh, seven degrees, less than 10 each. But now this one is the odd man out, and this one is not working in sync with these. So what we need to do with this drive shaft is uh, rotate this pinion up so that we're decreasing this joint angle to almost nothing. Okay, so now that this pinion is up, what, what I'm really shooting for here is I want this pinion to be about two degrees, two or three degrees less than the angle of the drive shaft. So if the angle of the drive shaft is 20, you want this to be around 17, 18 degrees. Um, there's a couple reasons for that. One is on leaf spring type vehicles, there's axle wrap. So as you're moving forward, your wheels are trying to turn one way, your pinion's trying to rotate the other way, and those leaf springs are gonna flex. So if you start with the pinion and it's a little bit low, under load, you're gonna go from, let's say, two to one to zero to one to two, and you stay within that two or three degree range pretty much the whole time. If you start with zero or even too high, you're gonna go from zero to one to two to four, and then you have too much joint angle momentarily, but you're gonna get shutter out of that drive shaft on a coil spring type vehicle with control arms that doesn't really move but you still you can put a degree two degrees here you don't necessarily want to have zero and that's because these u-joints they need to be able to behave as bearings a little bit they need to be able to move a little bit so as long as this is minimal it, it's good um, the way to do it is you measure the drive shaft you measure the pinion and you want the pinion to be about two degrees less you don't care what this is anymore it doesn't affect the pinion angle adjustment. One benefit that you get as you bring this pinion up, we'll grab a, a drive shaft, is if the drive shaft's here, and if you're lifting up the pinion, you're lifting up the bottom end of the drive shaft. So you're decreasing the angle on the drive shaft, which helps to decrease the angle up here, and that just gives you a greater wear life. These things are, are not moving as much as they were before. So now that this is effectively zero, we'll call this zero, it's two degrees, but for all intents and purposes, this is not running at any angle. So what we have now uh, with this double carton is a lot like the same operation of this shaft. If you could imagine this shaft just squeezed together to where these two joints are right here, you have the same thing. Two joints running at, at less than 10 degrees, they're running in unison, they're canceling each other out. This joint's not doing anything, so this runs smoothly. In a lot of short wheelbase vehicles, big benefit here is that because you're bringing this pinion up, you're reducing the angles, and where maybe before you had something that just won't work, you're really helping to reduce the angles on the drive shaft and you get back into the realm of something that will work. But the main benefit is that it runs smoothly. You don't get those, those low speed shutters. One thing that, that I should point out is the, the vibrations that you get from this, it's not a high speed vibration necessarily. 
if you have a vibration at 60 miles an hour, it's most likely that your drive shaft is not balanced or that it's loose. If this part of the shaft is worn out and this is rattling around and it's spinning real fast, it's gonna vibrate at high speed. The type of vibration you're going to get from this type of shaft running at too much angle is a throttle related vibration typically. So what that means is uh, on acceleration, on heavy load, going uphill, it's gonna be at its worst. When you let off the gas and the drive shaft vibration goes away, that indicates that it's an angle related issue. If, um, if it's something that you only get from takeoff up to maybe 40 miles an hour, that's something that it's almost always an angle related issue. One thing that I didn't uh, cover that I, I need to point out is if you have, if you start with this type of drive shaft, you have a yoke on the transfer case and you just get this, this double carbon shaft and you go to bolt it up, it's not going to quite fit. The U-joint will fit the yoke, but you'll go to put the uh, bolt holes in and you'll find that they don't, they don't line up if you're using the U-bolt style yoke. So if you have a, a transfer case that already has a fixed yoke like this one, you need to get a double carbon compatible yoke. On our website, I think we list them as CV yokes because the, the words are used kind of interchangeably. But you need to change the yoke on the transfer case. If you don't have a fixed yoke, so if this is if you have an XJ, uh, a lot of Grand Cherokees, a TJ, a YJ, a lot of different Jeeps came with a slip yoke. And so that drive shaft, there's an output shaft. Um, what we'll call this the output shaft. And then the drive shaft slides onto that output shaft. Uh, there's no good way to bolt up a double carbon shaft to that vehicle. So for slip yoke style transfer cases, you need to do a slip yoke eliminator kit. So that's what this has right here. It's converted to a fixed yoke, specifically a double carbon compatible yoke. And that's really the reason to do the slip yoke eliminator kit. We're going to have a video covering those as well. So if you want to dive deep into the slip yoke eliminator kit, look for that video. Sometimes when we tell people they need to adjust their pinion, they are concerned that their pinion bearing is not going to get enough oil and that's because you're when you bring this pinion bearing up you're bringing it away from the oil bath in the differential um, but it doesn't really matter the, the pinion still gets the oil and i'll explain why when you have this this is a cross section so you can see what's in here and there's oil in here and i don't know what the level is it might be right about here it might be higher actually actually here's the fill plug so yeah here's where the oil level is and even if that was flat, the pinion bearing wouldn't necessarily be submerged in it. But the way the oil really gets cycled through here um, to all the parts is by the ring gear. So this is the pinion gear um, that's driven through the drive shaft and then that in turn drives this ring gear. And this ring gear is spinning at about the same RPM as your tires. And as that's spinning, these gears, they're picking oil and much like a tire in mud, they're just slinging oil all over the place. So this is spinning. It's slinging oil up here. There's a little channel here. It's not real big. You wouldn't think the oil could get through there, but it's splashing up in there and it's getting to that bearing. A lot of people would say that they ran their pinion at, you know, whatever, how many degrees, 20 degrees, and the pinion bearing burned up and they think cause and effect. But what really is happening with that pinion bearing is that pinion bearing is spinning faster than the other bearings in the differential. The reason for that is the gear ratio. So this is, let's say it's a 410 gear ratio. What that means is every four rotations of the drive shaft, every four rotations of the pinion shaft um, is one rotation of that ring gear. So this is spinning four times faster, four times as many times. So, you know, every 100 rotations here is 410 here. And so this bearing is going to wear out four times as fast. It's just, you know, plain math. So if that wears out first, it's not because it's not getting oil. It's just because it's spinning faster. But when you rotate that pinion, you're changing the location of that fill plug. So in this case, we're lowering the fill plug. And then if you use that fill plug as an indicator of how much oil to put in, you're not putting in enough oil. It's really important to have enough oil, but as long as you have the right amount of oil, it's going to get where it needs to be. It's going to do its job. Sometimes people will ask us, instead of adjusting my pinion to get this shaft to run smoothly, why can't I just run this double carbon joint at both ends? And then it shouldn't matter what the pinion is. And that's valid. I see where they're coming from with that. But the reason we don't do that on, on a rear shaft specifically is mostly because it's unnecessary, um, but it also has some disadvantages. So the disadvantage is there, there's more parts here. There's more stuff in this end of the drive shaft, and it's heavier at this end of the drive shaft. We add this to this end of the drive shaft, 
drive shaft overall is now heavier. And when you're going down the road at 60 miles an hour, most vehicles, their drive shaft is spinning about 2,500 RPM. The more weight you have spinning at those high RPM, the more likelihood you have for high speed vibration. Um, also, when you're adding these parts to this end of the drive shaft, you're adding more moving parts. And the more moving parts you have, especially at this lower end of the shaft, that's closer to the ground and dirt and water, um, the more things that might wear out and might fail on you. Also, the drive shaft with, with double card at each end is more expensive, unnecessarily so in, in, in any rear application. Where we do build a shaft with a double card at each end is on front shafts on full-time four-wheel drive vehicles where the front shaft is spinning all the time. So think uh, Grand Cherokees and Grand Cherokee with a lot of lift where the pinion and the drive shaft, they're at odds with one another and you can't adjust the pinion because the steering caster is, is involved. So if you adjust the pinion to benefit the drive shaft, you're going to mess up the steering caster. Your drive shaft's going to run smoothly, but the Jeep's going to wander. It's not going to handle well. So in those instances, where the normal double carton shaft just doesn't run smoothly, we're going to do the double carton at each end. And it's not necessarily a good option, it's the best option for bad circumstances. To recap, when we say double carton, when we talk about a double carton style drive shaft, we're really saying a double universal joint, and specifically at this end of the drive shaft. So the double carton is at the trans case end of the drive shaft because that's where we can't really adjust the angle on a lifted vehicle and that's where we have to split it between two joints. A double carton shaft does not necessarily flex further than this type of shaft, a single joint, before it binds up, before it just stops. Sometimes it does, oftentimes it doesn't, but what it does do is it transmits power more smoothly through those increased continuous operating angles. So just going down the road, just normal ride height, when you're running a joint at 20 degrees, this is gonna run a lot more smoothly.